G'day. A couple of videos ago I made up a, uh, a six position rotary stop for my uh, lathe carriage and uh, this video I'm, I'm making up uh, some more of that, uh, mainly the, the, the clamp that goes on to the, um, the, the lathe way as well as showing the, the detent that goes in there and all that sort of thing. I had hoped to make a, a, a start on the connecting bracket but uh, with the benefit of hindsight in my editing uh, I didn't get to that and so that's going to have to be in a, a later clip but uh, this one still should be uh, interesting enough. This is the current stop arrangement I have. Uh, it consists of a, a dial gauge in, in half hour increments uh, and a, a micrometer head. Um, I was lucky enough to have this bracket when I got the lathe I had to make up the, the micrometer head and the uh, the housing for the, the dial gauge so I, I scale those from um, or at least this bit I scaled from from pictures. I think I almost got it right. From later pictures I've seen it's a little bit uh, more snub-nosed, but that doesn't worry me too much. The the dial gauge is in the around about the right position, so that's all good. Uh, that attaches, by the way, on just a, a dovetail on the end there. There's a height adjustment there, and then there's just a, a clamp screw there, uh, and that clamps up. The micrometer slides back and forth on the on the rail and then you get your fine adjust there and, and uh, quite often I'll, if I, if I want a, a depth of a particular amount I'll set up the tool on the face of, of the surface I need to measure down from, uh, wind this up to the, to the thing and then use a, a, a drill bit of, a, of the right size or, a, or a, a pin gauge or something just to set that space. However, what I've got to do with this thing is now make up a bracket similar to that I guess that will hold that there. One of the things I've got to watch is I've got limited clearance over here uh, and I don't want it so that this is going to interfere with the bracket. Uh, it needs to be able to, or the, the, the bolt that comes out of here needs to be able to press the indicator stalk without interfering with anything. I think I'll start by making up the, the bracket and the clamp arrangement and I'll probably end up with just a, a straight bit of flat across there. Um, I think I'll try and use that hole. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that, whether I use that one or whether I have this so it's straight down and, and use it. I can't quite pick that from the pictures. Um, but we'll see how we go with that. There are two more things that I want to do to this housing before I declare it completely finished. One of them is I want to put an undercut in here. Uh, purely to save weight, um, you know, there's a, there's a bit of aluminium there, I can probably save uh, 10, 20, 30 grams, something like that. So what I'm going to do is use a, um, a T-slot cutter. I've used my double uh, zero to uh, centre this on the rotary table and what I'm going to do is just put that in there, step that off uh, and use that to, to cut around. But I am going to leave a, I, I could have done this on the lathe except that I want to leave a solid part here uh, because the second thing I want to do is put some form of detent in there to hold this uh, together, I hold this into one spot. Um, now that can just be as simple as a ball bearing, a spring and a, a grub screw and I may have to resort to that. I, I have a vague memory I've got some, some ready-made detents around the place, so I have to look for those. But uh, if not, the, the, the ball, spring and grub screw will do. Um, but that, that'll be the second thing. So just drilling a hole in there, tapping it, and then having to, uh, on the, uh, the, the cup-shaped piece, put some, um, some countersinks or something like that just to, uh, to hold the ball. I want to put a, a ball detent in there so that um, when I work out what the orientation of this is going to be, it indexes around and stops at a particular position. So these are these are quite simple, but I thought, well, I'll show it to you because um, you may not uh, understand how they work otherwise. But basically, I'm going to drill a hole through there, diameter five millimeters. I'm then going to uh, tap it uh, partly uh, for for an M6 grub screw, and going in there is going to be an M5 ball, which is trying to escape from me, and a, and a spring. And that'll just push the ball up against this part. And 
once it does that, that'll, that'll stiffen that up. And when I work out the positions, I can then go through with a, uh, a transfer punch or something like that, put a mark in here and drill that where I want it, stick it up on the uh, dividing head, six equally spaced. Um, just, they just have to be indentations and uh, I'm away. Now that didn't take long. Uh, it's just an, an M5 hole tapped with M6, probably a depth of about 10 millimeters. Uh, and you can see why I wanted that um, uh, thicker part there because if I'd used a little thin part here if now I'm saving weight at the, the border wouldn't have anywhere to go so to put this together if I'd done this beforehand of course I'd have all sorts of strife but it's just a matter of then putting the ball in putting the spring in and then putting the the grub screw in to hold the spring and then it's just a matter of remembering that that'll bottom out on the on the thread that's firmed that up nicely, and if I have some little detents in there, that should uh, should do. I've just spent the last hour and a half roughing out this block of steel so it matches uh, roughly the profile of this one. I'm going to use a slitting saw to put a groove through there uh, to match that, and then I can start working on these angles. These angles are actually a little bit deceptive um, because you've, as soon as you, oh, you said they were easy, and then you look at them and say, ah, yeah, that's a bit of an undercut there. How am I going to do that? So we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. But uh, first step is to put that relief groove in there, uh, and then you know, sort all the rest of it out. This angle in here seems to be 65 degrees. I say seems to because I've measured a number of times, and that's what I get most times. But every so often something is thrown up, which I think, hmm, that can't be right. I marked off 32 and a half degrees on the on the protractor here and then I've come along and I've put a, a line like so on there from the bottom of my slot and over from the other side like that and then I went and put went round a 90 degree corner and put another line so that line and that line are 90 degrees and then that one there is for, for this angle here so the first step I'm, I'm going to do is, is line this up in my vise, come along with a cutter and take that piece off, and that'll give me a bit more clearance to, to, uh, to get into this bit. Uh, I'm still going to have a slight undercut though, so uh, I have a plan. So this is the plan to get rid of that pesky undercut. I've lined up my, um, my cut to line here with the, the parallel above the vise, so I'm all set there. And I'd like it to be really accurate, but I know I'm probably going to, have to do some filing on that later on, so um, as long as I get it reasonably close, don't mind. To get past this undercut, I was looking for a T-slot cutter, and I happened to find this dovetail cutter, which will do just as well. It's got enough, um, you know, stick out to, to clear that, that small lip there. It doesn't need to clear by much, it's only a couple of millimetres, but that should be enough to, uh, to get past that and give me a you know, a relatively good cut on that surface. This took a bit more mucking around than uh, I hoped it would. Uh, I seem to have that angle pretty right. Um, I did have to take this back a little bit so it would sit on there properly. When you think about it, you're asking, uh, that plane and that plane and that plane to coincide, which is going to be a, a, a difficult thing to do. But I can line those up now. And that, that feels pretty good. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can feel a, a, I feel, feel a change there, but um, not, not, nothing that's, you know, a, a big step. So if I bring it over here to the lathe and put it on, uh, it, it fits quite snugly. This is a 0.05 millimeter feeler and I can't that get that in there. I can get it in a smidge there and I can get it in a smidge there. So that's, that's pretty good. Now considering this is the unworn section of the, the lathe bed, that's going to be the worn. Sorry. That way is going to be the worn. So the exact fit uh, the angles are, are good, the exact fit doesn't worry me uh, enormously because I know that it's, it's, it's going to depend on where on the lathe bed this is put. Okay, here I've, I've blued it up with a bit of whiteboard pen and I'll put that on there. Uh, 
you might just be able to pick up there's a faint blue line there but when I look on here I've got lines of contact top and bottom of this face and the top of that face so it's not quite right but it's close enough I think that it'll it'll be stable and it'll it'll, uh, it'll do what I want I'm making up the uh, the replica knob um, I can't remember how I made this one this is actually a copy from a, from a drawing but what I'm doing is I've decided I'm going to put the thread uh, so I can put a bolt on there and then use that to dome the back surface there um, you could do it the other way around but then if you did the doming and the knurling and the shaping you've then got to work out some way of holding that so you can put the thread in there so uh, I'm doing it this way now that I've got the knurl on there I'll part that off and then get a um, it's actually a 3 8 BSF bolt um, mount that in mount that on that and then shape the shape the front of the knurl with the file what I've done is I've, I've made up the stalk that that pulls the two together with an extra long thread what I'm going to do is is spin on the um, the clamping plate which because it's threaded will act like a nut and then we're going to spin the knob on and that will work against that surface rather than bottom out on the thread which I think should give me a better result um, for those people worried about the sharp corners here in this whizzing ground, well yes, I'm uh, concerned about that and I'll be watching that. Uh, but remember too that this chuck has got some sharp corners that are whizzing around anyway. So uh, it's, it's not, in, in reality, it's not going to make much difference. What I need to do is just get the, uh, the file and the may start with a lathe tool just to, to, to bring that down. Uh, and take off, looks like uh, maybe a sixteenth, maybe two millimetres off that... Um, uh, diameter to, to, to dome it. Here's the mounting bracket. Well, I'll say functionally finished. Uh, I need to put some rounds on there. I need to paint it. I also need to weld a, a piece out here which will hold on to this. But uh, for the purpose of this video, it's, it's, it's basically finished. Uh, there's not much between it being loose to slide along the way and it clamping, uh, which is, you know, what you'd hope. Um, but it, it fits well and um, you know matches pretty well the uh, the existing